represent a unified front there in Lebanon. I have to be optimistic. I think that both sides are in good faith trying to uh, come together. Given the fact that public opinion is so skittish about military involvement in a foreign country, can you afford not to work out some sort of a compromise with the Congress? Well, I just, I just feel that for the very mission that the Marines are there, uh, that uh, we should be presenting uh, a unified battle. I think we can, yes. Mr. President, uh, your administration, however, seems to be in a bit of an untenable position of claiming that mar Marines in Lebanon aren't involved in hostilities, even though four of them have been, been killed. What's your definition of hostilities in this kind of a situation? Well, again, since this is all part of the thing that's being negotiated, I'm a little hard put to comment on that question. Let me say that the term imminent hostilities, which is incorporated in the War Powers Act, there seems to be some seem to be some legal disagreements about the technicalities and the meaning of that. There is no question but that there is danger, uh, but then this had to be anticipated in the very uh, sending in of the multinational force. There are four countries represented there who sent a force in, not to engage in combat, but to lend a stability and an order when the foreign forces in Lebanon would withdraw, and then the Lebanese government, for the first time in eight years, would set out with its own uh, armed forces to reestablish its control over its territory and its borders, that this force would be behind. But with the factional fighting that for eight years was going on, we were aware that uh, that, that was not exactly uh, sending them on a vacation. Uh, I think your aides are telling us that the main problem you have with the uh, War Powers Act is that there's some constitutional questions about the division of power between the legislative and the executive. Do you believe that the War Powers Act is unconstitutional? Well, this again is part of the legal difference uh, that is going on. Uh, and again, I, I don't feel that I, I should comment while this is being discussed, but that is not the issue that's being debated now. We have not um, made any appeal on that basis at all. We are simply seeking uh, mutual agreement between ourselves and the, the Congress but on, uh, that will lead to support of uh, our presence there. The Democrats, though, Mr. President, say that there was a, a basis for mutual agreement earlier in the week and you turned it down. At least they're saying that the House Democratic leadership offered you, uh, uh, offered to support keeping the Marines in Lebanon for another 18 months, no strings attached. Uh, why didn't you take that deal? Why wasn't that a good one from your perspective? I don't think that was a reason for any, any turn down. I think the, the, uh, there were still differences in the negotiations that were going on, and some of those were differences within the Congress itself uh, that could not agree on some of these on points like that. Mr. President, just changing the subject to the Lebanon itself, we are told that by next Friday, the battleship New Jersey will be off the coast of Lebanon. Does this indicate uh, an escalation, and uh, are we heading for a small war? No, that is not our intention, and our mission has not changed. The mission that I described earlier of being a uh, stabilizing force there as we tried to re, or as Lebanon tried to reinstate itself as a sovereign nation with uh, control of its own territory. No, we have no intention of enlarging forces. We have no intention of uh, well, what is the mission of New Jersey? We have found in this uh, danger that I described before, as we all know, that in the factional fighting that is going on, which is aided and abetted by the Syrians, who are definitely influenced by the Soviet forces in their country now, by Palestinians, PLO, who have come back in after having been uh, 
ousted from Lebanon, uh, and there have been direct assaults upon the multinational forces. We have taken casualties, we've had fatalities, so have our allies. And I have given orders that the Marines are going to be able to protect themselves. We're not asking them to sit there and... Uh, and that includes, if necessary, fire up in New Jersey. Yes. And uh, uh, we have already, uh, on one occasion, as you know, used naval gunfire uh, to silence the guns that were shooting at our men. And, uh, and I New don't Jersey know has more firepower put together than all the ships uh, that, that are there now. Yes, the New Jersey is, uh, <laughs> uh, has quite a bit of firepower. You spoke about the Soviets uh, and their presence. Would you say their role is an obstacle to peace, and how does it affect our overall relationship with the Soviet Union right now? And have you made any protests or any communication to the Soviets? I don't see that, uh, well, we're continually protesting about things of this kind. I don't see that there's anything new in this. Uh, yes, the Soviet is a hostile influence there uh, against peace, uh, and it tends to be, just as the Soviet Union is involved in what is going on in Central America. And it is time that more people uh, in the world, and certainly in our country, realized that the Soviet Union is bent on imperialism, on expansion and aggression. And where there is trouble, they love to stir the pot. And this they're doing. While we're talking about Soviets, Mr. President, there seem to be some reports that there are Soviet advisors operating with Syrian forces in the area where, where Israel pulled back. Can you tell us anything about that? No, we've had reports of that, and let me just say, I think there's every indication that uh, there is an influence on the Syrians. It fits the pattern that they have followed for for many years. But when you say influence, you're talking about a Soviet military influence on the ground as well as a, a geopolitical influence? Uh, I would assume that is taking place, yes. Okay. Can I go back to the question of military force? You said that you were prepared to have the Marines defend themselves. Are you prepared to let the Marines leave their defensive positions, uh, for instance, and, and operate with the Lebanese army if necessary? No, that has never been a part of our consideration. They're in areas as are, are the uh, military men of the other uh, nations, uh, designated areas and positions. And uh, no, we have not suggested that they involve themselves because that would be involving themselves in the combat that's going on. No, they, uh, they are to defend themselves. Mr. President, have you thought about how much more military uh, force you're prepared to use in Lebanon and under what circumstances? Whatever is necessary to protect our men. In, in, the, in that connection, uh, there is now a struggle going on in the mountains for the last century, Lebanese government's last stronghold in the mountains. If that falls, our men become more civil Is there any point in which we would be forced to withdraw if uh, the Druze and, and the Syrians were to reoccupy Beirut? I don't think that's a question that I should answer uh, now. Uh, anything we'll do will be in consultation with our allies in the multinational forces. Obviously, if uh, their position became untenable, uh, then I'm quite sure that all of us would take the appropriate action. What are you hearing from our allies now in this current moment of danger, as you call it? Well, they themselves, uh, we're in constant consultation with them. Uh, they feel as we do, and they themselves have, have uh, taken up defense uh, in their own behalf. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, the Marines have been in Lebanon now for over a year, and there hasn't really been much apparent progress on either the military front or the diplomatic front. Uh, what makes you believe that you can do in the months ahead what you haven't been able to do in the last 12 months, 13 months? Well, now, let me question or challenge this idea that there hasn't been much progress. Let's remember back when this was first conceived. First of all, it was part of 
the peace plan for the entire Middle East that I had proposed. Mm -hmm. It was not centered on Lebanon. Lebanon happened to be the place where the bombing and the shelling was going on and where there were PLO forces, Syrian forces, and Israeli forces, all there in and on the soil of, of Lebanon. <coughs> Our goal was to clear up that situation and get the forces out of Lebanon and then to persuade our friends among the Arab nations and the Israelis to enter into negotiations to uh, eliminate their long-standing problems and to have more nations in the Middle East do what Egypt did. But it seems Make that peace with seems, Israel. But it seems that Lebanon has turned into such a festering sore that we've almost even forgotten about the entire peace yes, plan. Yes, but remember the situation when we started. Remember the forces that were fighting there um, the Israelis against the PLO that were entrenched in the heart of the city, the uh, hundreds and hundreds of civilian casualties that were taking place. We now have an agreement, a pact between Lebanon and the Israelis. They have made one phase of withdrawal and have promised and assured that they are going to, to leave uh, Lebanon. Now, at that time, Syria had said that it too would leave that when everyone left, they would leave. Then came the Syrian reversal, in which they now deny that or refuse to leave and are insisting on control, in a sense, over another sovereign nation, Lebanon. There was the assassination of Jamal, Jamal's, well, the brother of the present president, who had been elected president, and now we have the new president. So. What has happened is the bulk of the conflict that we're having is the kind of disorder that began eight years ago in Lebanon when the various factions, the Druze, the Phalangists, each one of whom these separate groups created their own militia, their own armed force. And now what had not been anticipated with Syria promising to get out was not only their reversal, but now their backing and promoting of the Druze and the, and the uh, Phalanges in all this fighting and in their resistance to the Lebanese armed forces who are trying to restore order. And so I think that you think that the debate that's going on on Capitol Hill is giving aid and comfort to the Syrians. Is that correct? I think as long as there is a, an indication where they feel that possibly uh, this could result in some withdrawal of our forces. Yes, uh, it is giving aid and comfort to them. Do you think the Soviets, Mr. President, uh, are in any way responsible for this reversal of the Syrian position? Well, I'm quite sure there is an influence there, yes. Some people in this country say that uh, this whole recent stage of the problem began after the Israeli withdrawal and that the Israelis, according to some people, um, have left the Americans, quote, hold, and they were always holding the bag. No, we ourselves, uh, we went in there with the intention of persuading the Israelis to withdraw. Uh, it is true that when the Israelis pulled back from those positions, uh, the, these factional fighting, we have areas in there, such as in the Shuf, where the Druze, uh, claim that is more or less their mm -hmm. homeland. Then you have the phalanges. Remember that much of this fighting is going on, uh, not against the government, but between factions uh, that were the ones who uh, have contributed to the disorder for many years now. Do you consider the, your overall plan, how would you assess your, the state of your overall plan for the Middle East as of, as of now? Well, we can't just write it off. It is too vital to the Western world. The original purpose, as I say, Lebanon was just one facet that had to be cleared up while we went after the main goal, and the main goal was to bring the Arab states and the Israelis together. Remember that a year, as of a year ago, we were talking about a situation in which uh, only Egypt 
had said they recognized Israel's right to exist as a nation. Uh, since that time, there has been uh, indication on their side that they are prepared uh, to enter into negotiations. They are prepared to recognize Israel's right to exist. When you say their side, to whom you refer? The Arab states. The, the holdout at the moment is Syria. Mr. President, can I go back to your aid and comfort statement? You, that, that almost sounds like a treasonable activity. Some people would define it that way. But earlier on in the conversation, you said that you felt like there was a lot of good faith on both sides in this thing. Yes. It doesn't seem to square. Could you help us out on well, that a little bit? Yes, while well, we're trying to work this out, what I meant was that if you look at the War Powers Act in its entirety, someone on the outside, such as Syria, could look at a discussion over this, could look at that clause about 60 days limitation um, on them staying in, and it would be only natural for them to say to themselves, well, all we have to do is hang on for 60 days and they may be gone. Now, I don't think that those negotiations, uh, I didn't mean to imply a blame on one side or the other it, in the negotiations. Everyone is in good faith. I was speaking from the standpoint of what it looks like to the yeah. fellow on the outside. But the House Democrats are saying 60 days is a red herring, that they've offered you 18 months, which would not only yes. take care of the American election problem, but it would take care of this problem of giving the wrong signal to the Syrians and the Soviets. The, again, as I say, it is not intentional on anyone's part up there. It is the perception that is given to that outside enemy of what might be going on. Can we just ask one political question? That is, Mitty's policy has traditionally been held hostage to American presidential elections. Do you have any hope that you can further your peace initiative before the 84 elections? We've got Senator John Glenn is already thrown at the idea that maybe you should move the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And I think we're going to hear a lot of uh, ideas about what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah, well, I know. And in many instances, they're suggesting that we, in advance, impose some of the conditions that we feel should be negotiated between those various forces, the Arabs and, and the Israelis. And we never set out with this peace plan to impose something on them. So we have refrained from ever saying, we, th we think this is the way it should come out. What we've said is these are the matters to be negotiated. We stand ready to aid in any way we can in that negotiation. But it is not our place to impose a plan on anyone there. Mm -hmm. But is the political activity that you enter in now a complicating factor? You mean? American uh, domestic. American oh. domestic. Uh, well, I think suggestions of that kind, because uh, they would be suggesting that we do something that we feel properly belongs in the negotiations when they take place between mm -hmm. the Arab states and the Israelis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to Asia, I assume. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if the Congress is going to still be, uh, be here. Mr. President, we're running about 10 minutes late.